we're going to look at the mission of the twelve. You see that Mark chapter 6 and chapter 7 focus on a uh, section of Galilean ministry. And very often it's the disciples and their mission and Jesus's mission which is in view. We're going to land very heavily on verses 6 to 13, Jesus sending out the 12. But we're also going to look at very briefly the, um, the larger section, the beheading of John the Baptist and the feeding of the five thousands. And the first thing I want to say, I'm going to say three things. The first thing I want to say is this. The mission of Jesus is both urgent and it is authoritative. The mission of Jesus is urgent and authoritative. We're used to those two things belonging together, aren't we? Something that is authoritative comes with urgency. That which has the greatest authority over us needs to be pursued by the greatest urgency by us. Some post drops through your door in your student flat or your home and you look through the post, the first thing, it's uh, uh, general mail, it's uh, advertising from Domino's, pizza, buy one, get one free. Well, that's interesting, but you don't have to necessarily endorse it. You can put it on your kitchen uh, table and just take it or leave it. Also, there's a leaflet about getting a new conservatory. Uh, you think, well, that's interesting. Uh, well, I might or might not want to do that. Not sure if they would like it. If I put a conservatory on my student accommodation, I could or could not, but I'll leave it to one side. But it, 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 that's something I might be interested in. But then there's another one and it says inland revenue. And that comes with a completely different authority, doesn't it? And if you don't open it and find out what's inside, there's an urgency there or it's from the student loans company. That which has greater authority over you has a greater demand to be pursued with urgency. And I think that's really important when we come to Jesus sending out the 12 around Galilee here. Because sometimes I read a lot of um, children's uh, Bible picture books to my children. Sometimes we have the idea that Jesus' ministry with his disciples was like one great picnic, like hanging out in lovely bu bucolic Galilee, and it was all steady and lovely and pastoral. But here there is such a flavour of urgency about Jesus' mission as he sends the 12 disciples out. He's been rejected at Nazareth in his hometown. And now in wider Galilee, there's this mission and everything here, everything is superintended and providentially ordered by Jesus himself to show the urgency and the authority of his mission and person. There's a, a kind of self-conscious urgency about Jesus as reflected in the disciples mission that's so important everything here screams out urgency particularly to the nation of Israel about Jesus's mission look at these details with me Jesus calls the 12 and he sends them out the very fact he has 12 people 12 followers uh, shouts out 12 tribes of Israel Something awesome is happening. The people of God reconstituted around Jesus himself. This is urgent. Something urgent is happening. They're sent out two by two in the law, in the book of Numbers 35 verse 20. Weighty matters such as if somebody's been uh, murdered. How do you establish truth? It's always on the authority of two or three witnesses. The fact that they go out two by two shows the truthfulness of their claims. Something is happening in continuity with God's law yet is new. Jesus is doing something urgent and new. The authority with which Jesus gives them over evil spirits shows that Satan's 
kingdom has been ransacked. Something awesome is happening over the power of evil. The authority that they have to anoint people with oil and heal them shows the authority of Jesus. These miracles aren't mere kind of parlor tricks and people go, wow, that's great. They say something about Jesus. Interestingly, verse 14, when King Herod heard about, hears about this mission in Galilee, it's Jesus' name that has become known. These miracles point to Jesus' authority. This is an urgent mission to Israel about Jesus and who he is. Even if the disciples at this moment don't fully understand all who Jesus is. As you see, as you read chapter 6 and chapter 7, this is urgent. The fact that they don't take extra, they take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts. This shows their urgent need to rely on God for their mission. Their mission is, is directly counter to the wealth and the spectacle and the greed of a ruler like King Herod's. This is a different kind of mission, something new that Jesus is doing, and they rely on God to provide for them. Particularly interesting is the detail here about what they are to wear. They take a staff, they take sandals, not an extra tunic. What is happening here? Well, Jesus um, is directly recalling Israel's greatest moment of urgency. The defining moment of the nation of Israel was the Exodus. At the time of the Passover, God called his people out of uh, an enemy, a nation who had uh, tyrannized them and subject to slavery. He uh, showed his authority and glory over Pharaoh through the ten plagues. And then he calls them out at the death of the firstborn uh, through the Passover lamb and calls them out. And when you read Exodus uh, chapter 12, at the time of the Passover, they eat the Passover lamb with a staff, with their tunic, uh, with, their belt, uh, with their belts and with sandals. And here, the disciples themselves wouldn't have understood this, but Jesus is deliberately recalling the exodus. Something so urgent is happening in the ministry of Jesus. This is exodus. This is God's promised rescue. After the exodus, through the Old Testament, through prophets like Isaiah, that's what God's people were looking forward to. A greater rescue. A new exodus of being brought all of God's promises and God's pro promised salvation, not just for Israel, but the ends of the earth. And this is so self-conscious. Uh, this is such a great claim. By the, the very manner of their get up in the mission, Jesus is saying, Exodus, who do you say I am? Exodus, this is so urgent. Make haste, respond to my mission. The uh, response to uh, the, how the disciples are received s screams urgency at us. Verse 10, when they enter a house, they're to stay there till they leave that town. Yet if the place doesn't welcome them, they're to shake the dust of their feet. Dust in the Old Testament, that idea of uncleanness of the nations, the uh, Gentiles outside of Israel. So those people who don't respond to the, the message about Jesus and his kingdom are regarded as being outside the nation, unclean Gentiles. Your very place of being saved and being among God's people depends on this. This is no just kind of ministry, kind of, um, you know, like a work experience for the disciples trainee program. This is Jesus preaching who he is to Israel, saying this is urgent. Everything depends on how you respond to me. And look, it's an urgent message. Verse 12, they went out and preached that people should repent. They're picking up the same mes message that Jesus Christ came with and that John, Baptist, John the Baptist came with before him. 
repent. What is the response? God's rescue has come. A new exodus from sin and spiritual death and slavery. A deliverer has come. It is Jesus, the beloved son of God. Everything is pointed to him and his great rescue. What is the response? It's not just to continue how you are, but it is to turn to turn from sin and idolatry, to turn from life revolving around you and trust in him. It's an urgent message. You uh, catch the trouse, maybe you pick up the trouse, say in Aberystwyth, the trouse is a bus that goes from Bangor all the way to Cardiff. There's a bit where you can get on and it's a, a changing bit in Aberystwyth. So you get on a trouse bus and you're planning to go to Bangor. But unfortunately, at the bus station in Aberystwyth, you get on the wrong bus and you realise you're not going to Bangor, you're going to Cardiff. Now, Cardiff is a great place, but you don't want to go there. Now, you can feel sorry, oh dear, I want to be in Bangor. Uh, but that's not repentance. You can feel sad, oh dear, I'm going in the wrong direction, but that's not repentance. Repentance is, is where at the next bus stop, you get off the bus and you wait for the bus going the other way and you get on it and you turn direction. Repentance is a reorientation of going the right way towards Jesus, trusting, following him. This is urgence. Do you see, Jesus's mission is both urgent and it's authoritative because Jesus is the authoritative son of God. He is to be responded to with great urgency. And his mission and the mission of his disciples is urgent as well. It was like that in this ministry about a year before the events of the crucifixion. And it's like that after Jesus' death and resurrection too. 2,000 years of the church age and it is still urgent. I got an, a smartphone. I've given up my dumb phone and I've got a sm smartphone. Uh, so I feel like a Luddite. Lud I've stepped into the technological age. Something that I, I really just struggling to get my head around is the updates. I've got it kind of constantly news and messages coming to you all the time. This is urgent. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to that. We live in the age of breaking news. Go on the BBC News website, there's always something breaking. There's always something urgent demanding your attention. Breaking news. This just in, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He has entered a broken world. He is the one who brings a new and greater exodus, a rescue from sin and, and God's judgments. This just in, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Respond with urgency. And that's important. If you are not a Christian this morning, or you're listening on the live stream, maybe you've come along to the mission and your friend has said, oh, you know, check out my church. Come and hear uh, the word of God. Jesus Christ is not a Domino's advert. You can take it or leave it. Oh, buy one, get one free. Oh, I'm interested in that. I'll put it off. This comes with authority. Jesus is the son of God. There is an urgency to respond to him. It's not just an intellectual puzzle to be solved. This is about your soul, life and death, about whether you will face the judgment of God or be rescued. This is about what the whole world is looking for. Every movement is looking for some kind of freedom and some kind of release, some kind of ideal world. It's Jesus Christ who offers that through his death on the cross, through his resurrection. People should repent. How should you respond to Jesus? You should repent. You should turn. You should trust him. And you should do that now. There is an urgency about the mission of Jesus. But I think for believers, for Christians, this sense of urgency is really important to understand from the mission of the 12. Because I don't know about you, but my experience of pandemic in the last year has made me really lethargic. And, you know, every day is the same. Not sure when things are going to be change. I know there's people on the front line and, and things are very urgent for them. But a lot of people's experience of this time has been kind of, it's really going nowhere. 
And my experience is that Christians get sleepy, get sleepy. We're not able to share the gospel so freely. We're not able to um, do much. And there's a sleepiness that can come about us. And we can miss the urgency of our mission. What is urgent? What is the most important thing in a world of breaking news and demand this and what should be happening here? As Christians, we're to have a steady, settled urgency to make Christ known. A great exodus has happened. God has a great redemption plan. Whether I'm studying marine biology, whether I'm a librarian or a pastor or I'm working in Asda, I can do all those things. I can be a Christian and like football. I can be a Christian and like tiddlywinks. And yet, what has my utter allegiance is the mission of Jesus. So I prioritize things like the gathering of the local church and the praying for mission and the hearing his words. I make it clear in my friendships that yes, yes, I enjoy all these things, that there's something about me you need to know. I'm always gonna be telling you one way or another about Jesus because this is urgent. I don't berate people, I don't go crazy, I don't be irrational, but there's an urgency about God's people and disciples. And we pick it up when we get into the scriptures and we see the mission of the 12, the urgency of Jesus's mission comes from his authority. That's to be reflected in his people. So I've said that from this passage, haven't I? The urgency and the authority of Jesus belong together. Urgency. I want to say two more things from these passages. First thing, or the second thing then I want to say is this. Where will that urgency take you? If as a disciple you trust Jesus and you urgently follow him, you make it known that you're a Christian, you want to share him with others, you urgently ask people to respond to Jesus and his mission, where will that take you? And also, if you're not a Christian, you say, well, okay, hold on, this is urgent. What if I put it off? Where will that take you? Where does the urgency of Jesus take you? Well, what I want to show you is how the passage about the mission of the 12 is connected to the account of King Herod. Uh, Mark, very often in his gospel, makes a sandwich. He puts one account, he sandwiches something in the middle, and then he uh, puts the other account behind it. So do you see in verses 6 to 13, you get the mission of the 12. Then in verse 14 to 29, you get the beheading of John the Baptist. And then in verse 30, you get the apostles gathering round Jesus and coming back and reporting their mission. So we're to connect the uh, beheading of John the Baptist and the lack of repentance of King Herod with the mission of the 12. Now I wanna paint with a broad brush. What is the point Mark is making for us here? It's this, for disciples on mission, where will being faithful to the urgency and authority of Jesus take you? Well, it will take you into conflict with an unbelieving world. And it will, might even take you with your head taken off you and put on a plate. John preached a message of repentance. Look what happened to him. It was suffering. It was rejection. Get your game head on as a disciple. Realize that as we make the mission of Jesus authoritative uh, and urgent in our lives, that it will take us into conflict with an unbelieving world. We're to count the cost, as Jesus will say to his disciples. Take up your cross and follow me. Where will this urgency lead you? Be aware that this is where it will take you. But if you are not responding to Jesus's message of repentance, if you haven't settled with Christ, if you're putting it off and think, oh, I'm gonna treat this like a domino's leaflet, I can just do what I, I like with it. If you're not realizing that it's in fact inland revenue and it's got authority over you and consequences, look at King Herod here. He knows that John is a good man. He knows that he has a message of repentance. He hears him. 
He knows he's righteous and holy. He's puzzled. He's intrigued. Yet he puts off doing anything about it. He listens to him. And where does he end up? He ends up even worse, doing something even worse, killing him. He is enticed into his lusts, into his greed. Don't think if you're responding to Jesus and uh, you're thinking up and you're weighing up the gospel that you're on a level playing field. You see, our sin uh, would take charge of us like somebody r running down a hill and r you realise that your legs won't stop and you can't stop yourself. If you don't urgently respond to Jesus now, it could end up much, much worse. So there's an urgency for you. If you haven't come to Christ, this is urgent. This is not something you can put off. And if you are a disciple, get your game head on. Realise that this is where it will take you. So the urgency and authority of, of Jesus, where that urgency takes us into conflict with an unbelieving world. And here's a, the last thing I want to say. It's this, how do you maintain then that kind of urgency as a Christian? That's the question I'm asking as a preacher. Here we are in a very um, strange circumstance where life is just, it feels like we're in Groundhog Day and there's not an urgency. In a, uh, how do I maintain that kind of urgency you're talking about, Pete, without uh, kind of burning out? When I was at university in the CU, there was, I probably got a little crazy. You, you can do like, there's so many people who need to hear about Jesus. That's been, I'll spend all my time doing that and not studying physics or whatever it is. How, how do you have a settled urgency about as a Christian? How do you maintain that urgency without either burning out or drawing back from the world? How do you do it? Well, the answer is, verse 30 to 44, when Jesus feeds the 5,000? The answer is, very simply, it's Jesus Christ. What do disciples need to maintain them on their mission? They need the words and the grace of Jesus Christ and to look to him. Look at verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported him all they'd done that so many people are coming and going, they don't even have a chance to eat, they're stressed out and busy. Jesus cares. Come by yourself. It's good to rest. It's good to be drawn away. Come and get some uh, rest. But because of the mission, so many people are coming to this solitary place. Uh, they go on ahead, Jesus lands, he sees a large crowd. There's no one like Jesus. Jesus has compassion on the crowd. He sees like their sheep without a shepherd. Exodus language, again, God was the one who led his people through the wilderness like a shepherd. Israel were his flock. Here we have Jesus, the good shepherd, full of grace. He says to the disciples, you give them something to eat. And they said, we're not able to. And it's Jesus Christ who is the son of God, the one who cares and leads for his people, his people who through his word, provides for the crowd how there's a lesson here for the disciples we're to see the authority of Jesus as the son of God his compassion and grace disciples are to see how are they maintained in their mission how are they kept by Jesus by his sufficiency by his grace by his compassion by his word it's Jesus who sustains and helps it's him it's the wonderful thing about Christian mission is Jesus is both our message and he's the one who sustains us and he's the one who empowers us and helps us. It's keeping coming back to his word and his grace and his abundance to be supplied and helped. How do we maintain an urgency without burning out or rusting up? The answer is maintaining that walk with Jesus, looking to his word, coming to his grace, believing, receiving from him. Incidentally, I've talked about the Exodus with the mission of the 12. Here you get Exodus. After the Exodus, Jesus, uh, the, the Lord fed his people in the wilderness. And here we have a feeding in the wilderness. Jesus is the one who is sufficient and cares for his people. So 
the compassion and grace of Jesus sustains his people in their mission. This is urgence, and yet Jesus is full of urgent care and compassion. So if you are listening to this and you're not a Christian, you've got this sense of the authority of responding to Jesus, of his uh, of his, uh, his absolute authority over you. This is not something you, that you can put you off. But you're sitting there thinking, well, well, I feel you're kind of forcing me. Let me just say, this is the one who is urgent that you believe. One who is so compassionate. One who is so abundant. One who will lay down his life for you on the cross because he loves you. This is why it is so, so important you come to Christ. It is urgent because of his authority and because of his gracious character. It's Valentine's Day, so uh, I'm thinking about when I asked my wife to marry me, I realised, you kind of realise, that if I don't do this, I will be kicking myself for the rest of my life. There is something here that is so precious that I must pursue it with urgency. And I think it's like that with the gospel of Jesus. What is offered here is so precious, the love and compassion of Jesus, that you must respond to it with the greatest of urgency. And for ourselves then as disciples, pray for an urgency about your mission. Pray to shake off the lockdown sleepiness. Pray that steadily and repeatedly there would be a gospel priority about you. Get your game head on. Know where that is going. But also know how that urgency is going to be sustained. By walking with Jesus. By being amongst his people. By uh, remembering him. By looking to his cross together when you celebrate the Lord's Supper by knowing his word, by being fed from his word in communion, walking with Jesus every day, time on your own with him. There's a great book about Christian ministry. I think everybody should read it. It's uh, by a guy called Christopher Ash, and it's called Zeal Without Burnouts. What a great thing to pray for, to be zealous with urgency for the mission of Jesus without burning out. And we do that by looking to him as the sufficient, compassionate saviour who loves us.